This is my pretty little beauties chicks. And for those of you who don't know, this is Eric Johnson. Eric and I had done some work together with Team Z. He is the CEO and founder of Team Z. A little about a bit for you guys who've never heard of Team Z before. It is all about relationship marketing. So when I hear a team member say, I can't get a booking or I can't get someone to join my team and everything, Eric's program and systems will help you with that. They will instead of trying to get someone to do something, you'll be building a relationship that actually the people will be coming to you at some point. So Eric, I can't wait for you to share with my team all the goodness of Team Z. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm excited to be here with you guys. And um, that's exactly, Kathy, it was a great introduction because it's exactly what I'm going to talk to you guys about tonight, which is relationship marketing and how to become a power hour boss through relationship marketing. Um, Teamsy is a, a software system that you guys can use. It, it'll help you do your um, daily um, activities in less than an hour. You'll be so incredibly efficient and organized. You'll feel amazing, right? You'll know exactly who to talk to and what to do. And I'm going to show you how the, how the software works today. I'll give you a quick run through, okay? But before I show you the software, I do want to talk to you a little bit about relationship marketing, which is kind of the system that the software is built on to help you work it, right? So I've been teaching um, this system for 18 years, long before we had software to support it, and it was all manual. So this, so we have it all automated to make it easy for you guys. So I want to take you through the paces of learning a little bit about relationship marketing, and then I'll show you how to set up teams and how to crush a power hour. Then we'll do a question and answer. If you guys have questions, I want you to feel free to ask them away. Sound good? Okay. Um, I'm going to mute you guys now. Just... For distractions. If you feel the spirit move you and want to unmute yourself, you can. Um, otherwise, we'll do it all at Q&A. Okay. So this is what I want to talk to you about first, which is how to systemize your success with relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. The other key word here is system. You can't just do stuff because it feels good. You have to have a system to follow. That also makes it easier to duplicate, right? Okay, so my backstory, my, my background is not actually in direct sales or network marketing. My background is in professional business coaching. I've been a business coach and consultant for 18 years, helping people build their business based on relationships and the system I'm going to show you guys tonight, at least parts of it. Um, I primarily worked with in the real estate industry, working with top teams and brokerages, teaching them how to build relationships. I fell into direct sales network marketing by accident. About five years ago, I found some products that really helped me personally. And um, I lost a bunch of weight and I was feeling great. Obviously, it wasn't beauty. It was more health, health and nutrition type stuff. Um, but you know what happened was I was just really excited about the positive changes I was seeing in my life. And I started sharing these products with people. I wasn't even getting paid for it. I was just excited, right? I know you guys can relate to that. And so I started thinking, you know, maybe this would be a good little extra stream of income for me. Let me take a deeper look into it. And just to kind of give you guys an idea of where I was in my life at the time, here's my family. I'm incredibly blessed. I've got four kids. Um, my wife's amazing. I don't know how she does, deals with me. I try, to, I try to treat her pretty well. Don't worry. But Here's where I was. I was working in this career. I was a business consultant and coach, and I loved it. And uh, the problem was, was we were kind of in a financial rut. Anybody relate to that? And I, I had a lot of um, respect and prestige that went along with my job. I, you know, I had a beautiful corner office with the view of the ocean, like all the stuff I thought I wanted. But at the same time, we were kind of stuck financially. There was really nowhere for me to grow my business. It was kind of grown you know? And the other piece of the puzzle for me was that I was never around my kids. I was always working. And I felt like if I, if I let my foot off the gas, even a little bit, you know, everything would fall apart. We went through the recession. How many of you guys had a rough recession in 2008? I was laid off from my job. Um, and it was really scary. And I just felt like it was a house of cards. I had to keep stay on that hamster wheel or it would all fall apart. And, um, and I realized at that time that I was going to completely miss watching these kids grow up. I saw them in the morning when, when I left for work, they were still in bed, you know, getting out of bed. And when I got home, they were getting into bed. And that was kind of my relationship with my kids. So I saw network marketing as an opportunity to create some extra financial freedom for us, a little breathing room. But also I thought, you know what, if I could just get this to replace my income, then I could be more flexible, be around my family. You guys, I, who released that? Now, here was my problem. When the heck am I going to build this business? I didn't have any time. I didn't have any time to do it. I just felt like I was already so busy. 
So what I did was I took an audit of, of my calendar and I realized that if I could squeeze one hour a day and focus it on my business, I think I could do it. The challenge was how do you leverage that time in one hour a day so that you can get everything done that you need to get done and then go on living your life. And so I started looking for tools that would help me leverage my time, you know, software tools and things that would help me be more organized. And what I found was there was, wasn't anything for us. There was nothing for people who wanted to build relationships and who wanted to just stay focused on the important things, which was connecting with people and knowing who's, who's falling through the cracks and who's not and things like that. So long story short, that's how Teamsy came to be. I was like, I can't believe this doesn't exist. I found some people smarter than me, literally drew it on a napkin and we built Teamsy. Okay, so that's kind of how Teamsy started. And just to kind of give you an idea, we've been around four years now. And in that time, we've served more than 100,000 people in network marketing, which is, it's mind blowing to me. Honestly, some of you guys know, I know like, I know like Abby and Kathy, you guys, pro I probably showed you a picture of my shed a year ago when we talked. Like this started in a shed in my backyard. Now with 100,000 people have used it. And that's just from people sharing it with each other. And just to kind of give you an idea of results, our active users, they're averaging 21 customers and nine recruits over 90 days. 21 new customers and nine recruits over 90 days. How many of you guys would like to multiply that by four and call it the year? It's about being a, following a system and approaching people the right way with heart. Okay, and I'm going to kind of teach you how to do that tonight. Okay, so let's dive into this a little bit, this topic. What is relationship marketing? A lot of times people think this is just selling stuff to your friends, right? It's like taking advantage of my relationships to get a sale. That's got it all backwards. I want you guys to understand relationship marketing is a philosophy of doing business that puts relationships and business and people, I'm sorry, relationships and people ahead of your sales and products. Okay. It puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. It's not an abstract feel good concept. This is a proven system we follow always knowing what to do next, always knowing what to do next. Um, when I was a 14 year old, getting a, a part-time after-school job. I, I got a job at Burger King. Anyone remember working fast food? Burger King paint, literally painted footprints on the floor where they wanted me to stand during my shift. It was a system. I followed the system, right? And we need to have a business to know what we're doing. We can follow a system that works. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this. Relationship marketing, it's a lead generation system. A lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of a business. I know that's a mouthful, but I want you guys to understand something. You're business owners. And as business owners, you need to choose a lead generation system for your business. It's, a number, it's, the, first, it's the first consideration for a business owner. Okay, why? I happen to think relationship marketing is the most effective and best and most fun way of doing this. But I want you guys to get your head around this idea of a lead generation system because your business, you're not in the beauty business. You're in the lead generation business. That's your business. As owners, your job is to generate new interest, new inquiry into your business. Does this make sense? It's a mindset. And I want you guys to understand you can be really busy without being productive. We need to be focused on what are we doing to generate these things, interest and inquiry. Okay, next principle I want you to get is this. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Your duty is not to make money or to get recruits or to make sales. It's to develop and deepen relationships. Once you understand that, it takes a lot of the pressure off you and you'll find your results improve. Does this make sense? And this is an important piece because what we do with relationships is we turn them into advocates. Okay, we turn relationships into advocates by investing time and providing outstanding service. Guys, this industry teaches you the go for no philosophy. Just blast everybody you know. Most of them will say no, but you get a few yeses and you keep on churning, right? The problem with that philosophy is you're throwing away friends and family over your, over your shoulder like they're dead bodies. When your focus is on the relationship, I want you guys to know there are people who care about you and trust you who are never going to buy your products. But they will become your advocate. They will tell other people about your mission and what you're doing, and they will bring business to you. Because we don't throw relationships away, we deepen all of them. Make sense? Okay, next principle. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. 
And if you, if, how many of you guys have come across people in this industry that are jerks, for lack of a better descriptor? Or maybe they're doing things that are not trustworthy or you feel are a little bit shady. Maybe you've been asked to do things by people you respect because it's all they know and you felt a little icky doing it. Here's what I want you guys to know. Relationship marketing depends on trust. The good news is trust makes the work fun. Because when people trust you, even just a little bit, you don't have to convince them. You don't have to sell them. You, get, you can just get right to helping them. Make sense? Also, trust takes the ickiness away. There's no icky salespeople when you build trust. How many of you are paranoid of being seen as the icky salesperson? That's me. I, I mean, I still think about it. I'm like, ooh, is this, is this coming across icky? When there's trust, when you focus on building trust, that's not an issue. And again, you get to go for yes instead of going for no. You get to go for yes. Okay? So the good news is because the system depends on trust, you can never do anything disingenuous or shady or anything that's going to make you feel gross. It just won't work. So let's not do it. Uh, there's a better way. Okay. So how do you actually go about building trust? There's four essential ingredients for building trust. I'll teach them to you quickly and then I'll kind of break them out for you guys. But I want you to start thinking about these because these are the areas that you need to focus your energy as a business owner so that you can keep your business growing. Okay. Number one is, <coughs> excuse me. Number one is chemistry. Okay. Chemistry. Number two is character. These are the four essential ingredients to building trust. Number three is competence. Okay, competence. And number four is consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. All right. So chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? In other words, our job is to connect with people, not to divide people up, right? So find out what you have in common. Ask people questions. We all have stuff in common right? Because nobody wants to do business with someone they don't like. And everybody wants to do business with someone that feels like a friend. So find your chemistry. Number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. Okay. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. So I want you to notice something about this definition. You don't actually have character. We think of ourselves as people of good character, right? How many of you guys would think I'm a person of good character? The truth is, is that character is an action. So to be a person of good character means that you are consistently showing others your, how much you care for them through your actions. It's such an important thing to understand because we want to develop the character of our business. And the character of our business, by the way, is our personal character because we are our business, right? And so everything that we do needs to be demonstrating how we care for others. And I want you guys to think about this. It's 24-7 for us that you three are in Orlando right now, which makes me think of, of Disney. You know, Disney talks about you're always on stage. You're a cast member. Somebody's always watching you. And so like, you know, like Disney, Disney um, cast members are reminded, you know, like don't scratch yourself or pick your nose or somebody's watching you, right? So it's like that in our business too. It's, it's how do you demonstrate your character? How are, your, how are you posting on social media? Is this lifting people up, showing your audience how much you care for them? Or is it all about you? Are, how are you doing things like, uh, I always tell people like the way you drive your car demonstrates your character. Do you have a big luminous sticker on your car and then cut people off in traffic? right? Think about, just think about these things. It's super important. Do you return the shopping carts in the parking lot to the shopping cart return? Please. That's my personal thing. Let's get those returned people. Characters, when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. Number three is competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Okay. It's when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Do you want me to be your customer? Show me that you know your product, right? How do I know that you know what I'm, you're talking about? Is, is beauty an area where people need help and recommendation to figure out what the heck to do? Yeah, of course. So first piece is, are you competent? Now you may be brand new. You might not be that competent yet. That's okay. But this is a journey you need to commit to. You need to be working on this, learning, getting on all the trainings you can, getting on all the product trainings that you can, buying the products, trying, right? Trying the products, demonstrating the products. You need to be learning that competence as you go. And when you're new, you don't have, you can just share with your people, your friends, your family, and your connections that you're learning. That's okay. That shows the competence growing, right? Remember, your friends and family have seen you with your pants on backwards. So they're not going to believe you're competent suddenly. They need to see the journey anyways. The next piece of this is, are you a business person I can trust to mentor me into the business? Do I see this opportunity and do I want to join you? 
right? This is where a lot of people feel insecure in the beginning. And here's the thing, you need to be working on that. You need to be getting yourself to that position. In the meantime, guys and gal, sorry, I'm from California, so it's like saying y'all. We just say guys, okay. In the meantime, you need to lean into the competence of your team and your upline, okay? The last thing you ever wanna do is pretend to be something you're not. Don't pretend to have competence where you don't. Just tell people, oh my gosh, Kathy is amazing. You know, you're going to, Kathy's got, uh, I don't remember, Kathy, was it 20 years experience in this industry? 23 years. Hey, that's not bad memory though. I mean, that's a lot of experience, right? So you're joining that experience. That, so I'm, I'm going to sell her competence. Does this make sense? So lean into your team's competence, work on your own until you get to the place where you have your own and you can demonstrate that to people. And then you can tell your team, you just lean into my competence until you're ready, but don't ever fake it. Remember, it's about trust. As soon as you pretend or fake anything, it's all gone. You gotta start over. Make sense? All right, here's the principle on these three and then we're gonna jump to the next thing. When somebody's gonna do business with you, this is all they care about. Can I trust you? Do you care about me and are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? When somebody doesn't know the answer to these questions, they will raise objections. Have you guys received objections? Yeah, it's great. Overcome the objections, educate them, help them along. Over time, you build that relationship and they will know the answer to these questions are yes, yes, and yes. And that, you, you guys, is when you will have an advocate for your business. Pretty cool, right? Okay, next, next thing. Number four is consistency. Duh, right? You want people to trust you? You got to be consistent, right? Am I right? Yes. Here's the principle. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. Look, here's the thing. Oh, I just, I joined this great business opportunity. Everybody join me. There's a lot of people that are going, okay, well, let's see if she's still doing this in six months, Right? They wanna see that you can be consistent because that's how they can trust you. So you're, the important thing for you to, is to be consistent, right? The, the second piece of this is people, people respect it so much, they wanna be around it. Once they see that you're somebody who's consistent and can be trusted, now they kinda of want some of that in their life. They want a little piece of that. How many of you have been told by somebody else that you're, you're inspiring them, they're inspired by what you're doing? And that is them seeing you being consistent. That's what's inspiring them right? So things that are important, being a product of the product. How many of you are products of your product? Yeah, you use them. You buy them and use them. Great. Do, do other people know? Are you sharing that with other people? Do they know you're using it? Are you sharing your journey? Are you on social media talking about your products? These are important things for people to see consistently, right? Other things that people, you know, part of this process is your consistent personal growth work your consistent health work, things that go along with building a successful business. People see these things and they want to be around it, right? Okay, so let me just ask you guys the real important question. Are you consistent with your relationships? Are you consistent with connecting with people? A couple of you guys know Teamsy is the key. That's why you've invited me here tonight. You're like, I was when I was on Teamsy. Now we're going to do it again, right? This is, this is where the rubber meets the road because in relationship marketing, it's a contact sport. You need to be contacting people if you want a relationship with them. I don't mean hit them hard like football. I mean, you just got to be in contact with people. You can't have a relationship if you're not connecting with people, right? In fact, if you hired me as a consultant, I'd say, hey, the key to this business is to be in contact with everybody, everybody you've ever met. I know your time is scarce though. That's why we built a system to make it easier because the more people you're in contact with, the more relationships you build, the more more opportunities you open for your business. Make sense? Here's a principle real quick on this. And then we're going to jump into a Teamsy demo. I'll show you the, the software, which is awesome. Here's the principle. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Okay. Do you guys have your, it, those of you with your cameras off, if you could turn them on just for a minute so I can see your faces. I'm going to jump out of this presentation for a quick second because I want to see you guys. All right, just a real quick question on this. How many of you have ever received a great card or letter from somebody that you care about? The kind of thing that had a handwritten message in it that when you read it, it just, man, just touched your heart. How, 
I hope you guys all received at least one, hopefully. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay, good. Second question. Do you still have that card? Have you saved it somewhere? Is it somewhere tucked away in a secret special place? Okay. How many of you guys have a pile or a big pile of, of cards and letters that you've saved for the years? You can't part with them. Isn't that amazing? Now, here's the thing about this. We treasure those so much. A lot of times they're from people that we live with every single day, yet we'll keep a card they gave us forever, right? Um, often when, when loved ones pass away, we save those cards and letters long after they're gone and treasure them. They, they're pr like priceless heirlooms. All right. We all agree with that. Now, here's another example. This is a happy birthday postcard. Have you guys ever got, received one of these? This one's from my life insurance salesperson. The one person I hope we never have to talk to, right? The life insurance salesperson. He sent me a happy birthday postcard. So when you guys get these, do you put these in the special place? How many of you have, you throw these away? They go right in the trash, right? This has no value. It's a card. It says happy birthday. It even has a little bit of handwriting in the back, even though it's bulk, right? But it has no value because this violates the principle. This requires zero investment of time on his part. He invested no time in it, right? And it's not a personal connection. It's a bulk mailing. It doesn't actually even have my name on it. It just says, happy birthday, you, right? Not personal, no time invested, no value. You want to, you want to deepen a relationship, you have to invest time and connect personally. And I can't make that point enough with you guys, with you guys so you understand how Teams is designed to work. We're not going to be writing letters all day long but we are gonna invest a few seconds to connect personally with people. We create a system to make it easy to do that. Connecting just a few, investing a couple of seconds in one person makes their day. And that's what we build upon to create a relationship. Does this make sense? Now, this is, uh, we call it bulk. Bulk is the bad word, right? The sexy word is automated. Oh yeah, marketing automation. Sounds great, doesn't it? So don't fall for those terms because what, what marketing automation means is impersonal, zero, low value, not likely to make an impact. Does that make sense? This business is always going to be one-on-one. -on -one. What, what I'm going to show you is a system that allows you to connect one-on-one -on -one efficiently so it doesn't take all day so that, and so that people don't fall through the cracks. Make sense? Okay. So let me dive back into this. I think I have one more slide and then we'll jump into Teamsy. So that's the principle. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships, okay? So this is all well and good. In the beginning, I told you, you gotta have, it's more than just good feelings, right? You gotta have a system to follow. You need a way to stay in contact with all of your relationships. You need to know when you're gonna contact people. In other words, you know, don't make me think, just tell me who to connect with today. Know what you're gonna say so you don't stare at your screen all day trying to think of the perfect message and not actually send any. Who's guilty of that? <laughs> I am. I am. All of this is by trial and error. I just want you guys to know. And then I have a system so that nobody falls through the cracks. And I'll talk about this in a minute, but this is the biggest problem in our industry are all the people falling through the cracks after all the work of creating interest. Okay. So let's dive into Teamsy. Now, one thing that's really cool and exciting, and I want you guys to know, is that we have a Luminous Beauty custom version of Teamsy. Where is it here? Oh, actually, I want to set this up on Setup Wizard. So what you're going to do is go to Teamsy.com. If you're not already using it, go to Teamsy.com, whether you're live on this with us or watching on the replay, and you're going to go to um, uh, Teamsy.com, and then when you click Start My Free Trial, we give you a 30-day trial for free, full access, no credit card required, nothing weird, and you're just going to choose the Luminous version of Teamsy. How cool is that? And once you get in there, it's going to feel like home. You're going to know exactly what to do. Okay, here we go. I'm ready to share now. Uh, no, wait, I don't want to share the whole desktop. That's the mess. Let me just share Chrome. Here we go. Okay, great. All right, so you're looking at Teamsy. Now, when you first log into your Teamsy free trial, it's going to take you into the setup wizard. The setup wizard is designed to make setting up Teamsy super easy, okay? And so what we're going to do is, I'll just take you through it real quick. There's a little video here for me. Great. We're going to go over to the next page here. And first thing I want to do is set an income goal. What's your income goal? How much money would you like to be earning a year from now? Okay. So I, you can see mine set at 150,000. 
That was the salary I was trying to replace with my business. Now, look, if you, if you scroll this up, you can make a bigger goal, but it has you doing more work per day. See these circles? This is how many people I'm going to connect with on a day for a year in order to hit my goal. Okay, so if your goal is 100, you'll be connecting with six, excuse me, six prospects, four customers, and three consultants each day, five days a week. So at 150, which was my goal, I'll be connecting with nine prospects, six of my customers, and four consultants on my team each day. You guys with me? All right. Yeah. How does this work, Eric? It's magic. No, the truth is, is that we've studied what kind of results people typically get by building relationships. And we know that if you're new and starting out and you hit these numbers daily, you can get these results. Okay. So let's go on to the next line. The next page, we're going to get all your contacts into Teamsy. Now, once you get all your contacts into Teamsy, now you can be organized. So you can't be organized when you're looking for pads of paper, sticky notes, right? Scrolling through your Facebook messenger going, who should I connect with? Like you can't be organized that way. You're always going to have people falling through the cracks. We're going to get them all in one place. So we'll get your back office contacts, your, you know, your team, your customers, your Facebook friends, your Instagram, everybody in Teams so that you can get organized in one place and we can prioritize your list for you. Okay. <clears throat> Once you got that done, we'll launch Teamsy and now we've got our Teamsy set up. Now, a couple of things that I want just to kind of show you on this really quick. Um, I'll give you a quick, a quick tour of this dashboard. Now, if you're on your mobile phone looking at Teams, it's going to look slightly different, right? Because it's a smaller screen, but you'll still have all, the, all these same functions. So if you look right here where it says today's activities, okay, those are the goals that we set and set up. So I've got a goal to connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four consultants each day. You can see I've got zeros because I haven't done any work yet. I've also got a goal to share three times, and I'll show you how we do that tonight. But that means, did I share my products or did I share my business opportunity with somebody? Right? My goal is to do it three times a day. Hey, I'm going to connect with 19 people, but only share three times. Yes, I'm going to explain that as we go. But not everybody's ready to, be, to get shared the first time you say hello. Does this make sense? It's like proposing marriage when you've just introduced yourself. I'm sure there's times that has worked, but generally it's not a good idea. And then you've got a goal here to do ads. That's just adding new people to my Teamsy, getting, meeting new people or people I haven't thought of, getting them in Teamsy. Why? So that now I can be organized in my approach to building a relationship with them. Okay? All right. So there's kind of the goals. Now, if you look down here into the Power Hour section right here, this is designed to help me work. Now, Teamsy is a CRM. Some of you guys, do you guys, have you guys ever heard that term, CRM? That means, that means um, contact relationship or customer relationship manager. What that means is it keeps track of everybody's contact information, right? And uh, keeps track of your conversations and all that. Some of you might have, might have jobs where you've used a CRM and hate it. Like most people hate the CRM softwares that are out there because they're so complicated. But more than that, what Teamsy does right here in this Power Hour module, is it takes all that contact information and organizes it and tells you exactly what to do each day so you don't have to think. You can just go do it. So in my power hour, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my goals to nine prospects, six customers, and four consultants. You can see here, this is my four lists. I've got prospects, customers, consultants, and my follow-ups list, right? And I'll talk about that. So on the left side are my four lists and who's up next. On the right-hand side is where I log what I sent, what kind of message I sent them. And so it's tracked as I go. Pretty cool, right? I don't have to look anybody up. I don't have to think. I don't have to wonder. I just do it right here. Now, there's one more step for setup, which I'm going to skip for, for time savings, but you'll notice that everybody has a number next to their name. And that's because we rank our contacts on a five star scale. Have you guys ever used a five star scale to rank <laughs> pretty much everything, right? We rank our relationships on a five star scale, which allows Teamsy to create the, the prioritized list for us. Okay. Just to tell you real quick what the, fi what the stars mean. A five-star person, those are your best friends, your closest family, your hottest prospects. Five-star people are going to come up first on your list. And they come back automatically every 30 days. Every 30 days, you get a reminder, hey, go connect with that person. Four-star people are going to be your friends and family, your warm leads, the people that, you, that trust you. Four-star people are the people you think might join your team or your business with a little bit of um, nurturing right? They come up after the five stars, your four star people start showing up and they come back automatically every 60 days. Okay. Three star people, who knows? Three star people, I don't know which way they're going to go. I have no idea yet. Most of the people you know will be three stars. 80 to 90% of, of your list will be three stars. 
And three-star people come up every 90 days. You just get a reminder to connect and stay in touch. And your, your job with them is just to warm up the relationship over time. Connect with them. Make sense? Two stars are getting colder. They show up every 120 days. Does this make sense? So when you give people more stars, they show up first and more often. This allows Teamsy to create your list for you every day. You never have to think about it. You just assign them a rank and it creates your list automatically. So then you just come in. My goal is to connect with nine prospects. Great. I'm going to do a power hour. You guys ready? Just log into Teamsy. And now I'm going to start my power hour. You work from left to right. First person on my list is Kathy. So I'm going to message her. Okay. Now Kathy is, um, let's see here. I've got Facebook open right here. Okay. So I'm ready to send her a message. So here's Teamsy. First person on my list is Kathy. We're going to send her a message. How many of you get stuck at this point? What the heck will I say? <laughs> that was me. Okay. So when we first launched Teamsy, um, that was the number one feedback I got was, this is great, but what do I say? So I built a scripts library into Teamsy for you guys to use. There's some really easy to use scripts just to break the ice with people. Remember, the goal is just to connect, not to try to sell or recruit right now, okay? We just wanna connect, and this is, this is my goal, to make their day. I call it the make someone stay mindset. Just get in the make someone stay mindset, it becomes so fun. So I went into scripts, so right here, what I clicked on was scripts. See the scripts right here? And that's gonna give me a script to help me just connect. I'll take the first one on the list, here's how it reads. Connect number one. Hi, Jane, just stopping by to say hello. How are you? Hope your day is awesome. So simple, right? Look, I'm gonna copy that script and then I'll paste it in here real quick. And I'm just gonna change the name. Okay. Oh, what's so funny is I've been telling people for four years, always write their name in these messages. I know it's kind of strange when you're messaging because you don't usually use the name, but write their name because um, then they know it's to them. And then since then, you know, it's become a, it's become a meme in network marketing, the, the hunting. Have you guys ever heard that? Like, hey, hun. Hey, hun. Yeah, that's why. People know that it's not personal, that it's bulk. Remember, it's about personally connected. So put the name in there. Now, the other thing that I would do to edit this script is maybe put a couple of emoticons you know, whatever you guys like. Look, I've got a couple of emoticons. I've got the right name. Now I've got this just the way I want it. It only took me a second. Now what I'm going to do is go send it to her. So I'm going to just copy this whole message. I'll jump over to Facebook and I'm going to message her there because we're Facebook friends. There she is. And we'll just send her this message. That's a fun picture, Kathy. I like the dancing picture. How fun is that? It's a great picture. Okay, so look, here we go. We're sending the message. Boom, sent. If she wasn't muted, you would have heard her phone beep as she got that message. Okay, so that message is sent. So now I'm going to log this in Teams. He has a Facebook message. See the blue button that says log connect? Done. It's done. Now look, she's gone off my list. Disappeared for 30 days. Gone. And I've got one done. This little circle is filling in. Now the next person who's up next is Jay. I'm going to use that same message. I've already got it on my clipboard. Just paste it in there. Now I can keep my emoticons. Just change the name. And it's okay to send people the same message when all you're doing is really saying hello. You're just breaking the ice with them. The conversations will be organic once they respond. Okay, so look, I've got this message now set up for Jay. I'm going to toggle over to Facebook and send Jay this message. There she is. Okay, are you guys with me? Do you see how easy this is? So I'm now connecting with people and just sending messages. Now, I'm gonna log this one. Same way, big blue button, log connect. And now I've got two done, seven left. See the circles filling in. So I'm gonna keep going down my list, just sending out messages to connect with people until I'm completed my goal. My, mine was nine. The circle will be all the way blue. And then I'll go to the next list, which is customers. Now, a couple pro tips on this. Some people will respond immediately. Don't run off and have the conversation yet. Get all the outgoing messages done so you don't get sidetracked. Okay, just focus on getting them out. Um, and what I recommend you do is maybe set aside a couple of little windows of time in your day to just respond to messages so that you're not on your phone all day. Some of you will get sucked into that. So like I would do, I would do my power hour in the morning, like four, four, between four and 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, really. I have four kids. That's the only time I could. And then I would respond to messages at lunch and respond to messages in the evening. And that, that keeps the cycle going. Make sense? Okay. So next list are customers and that you're going to connect with customers the same way. The goal with your customers is not to sell them or tell them about the new special or all that. I mean, you can do that stuff. The goal again is just to connect and make their day, just to be in touch. 
right? Think about an amazing restaurant with the best service. Every time the server comes to the table, they're not trying to sell you something off the menu. They're just checking in. They're just being present. They're just making sure that you have everything you need to have a great time. Does this make sense? And that's the way I want you guys to do it. So look, Jerome comes up, go to scripts, get a script for a customer. Super simple, right? How about this one? How are you enjoying the products, right? You put in the actual products he's using. Please send me an update. Let me know how I can be of help. By the way, that is like a key sentence. Please send me an update and let me know how I can be of help. It's awesome. Because they could have a problem. Great, now you have a chance to talk to them about it. They could be having a great time. Great, now you can offer them something else, right? Are you with me? Um, I love this script, by the way. This one, hi Jane, just checking in to see if there's anything I can do to make your day. Oh my gosh, that is such a great one to send to the people you really like. It'll blow them away. They'll, they usually will say, you just made my day. So look, I'm using that one. I'm gonna change the name. Jerome, just checking in to see if there's anything I can do to make your day. Great. Smiley face. You guys with me? How easy this is? And the same thing, I'll go send him the message. Now I'm, I'm showing you Facebook Messenger, but you could be texting messages. You could be Instagramming messages. You could be sending people messages on Snapchat. I don't care. You could be calling people and leaving them. However you want to connect with people, you can log all of it here in TNZ, okay? I happen to like connecting with people on Facebook because the, because the response rate is like almost 100% for me anyways. Okay. Are you guys with me? So I log that when I'm with my customers and I work my way down my list connecting with hey, customers, Eric. just staying in touch with customers. Can, can I just ask a question? Yeah. So where you are, you're putting in the activity. Is there a way to see all of the previous, previous activities so you know that you didn't send a similar message last time so you change it up? Yeah. You just, right here, you just click on activity and that'll have the record of all your conversation right there. Now, I don't have any with this particular contact, but if I clicked on activity, everything I'd sent that person ever would be right there. Okay, great. Does that make sense? Also, I mean, while we're on the topic, you can also go to details and you can see information about them, like all their contact information would be here. Um, so if you wanted to call them on the phone or text them, it would be right there. You could grab it right there, right? Um, things like their birthdays and their spouses and the names of their pets and things like that would all be there. So also any tags that you've added would be there. So all that kind of stuff is right there at your fingertips. Any notes you've kept on them, specific notes would be there. So all of that is right there as you're connecting. Pretty cool. So I would love to share something that I learned or did sure. last time I tried Teamsy is that once you found out their birthday, I actually made monthly tags. So I did February as a tag. I did January as a tag. I did March as a tag whatever, because then this way you could search all your February contacts and your team members or, and if you have downline and you want to start tracking their anniversary month or something like that, you can also do tags so that it makes, it shrinks down your thing. Taylor, you seem excited about this. <laughs> yeah. The tags let you create sub lists that you can grab quickly yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, I also recommend, we'll get to that in a minute when I get to that point, point but re I recommend tagging all the products they order from you as tags. Um, you know, that's, we, when you're start, as you, if you do it as you go, it's not a daunting task. But, you know, if somebody orders a couple things from you, tag it. Then what happens is over time, you know everybody who's ever bought this product by clicking on that tag. It gives you a list of them. How cool is that, right? So, hey, if... I mean, you guys get it. I don't need to explain. Thing goes on sale. You've got a list of everybody who ever bought it. Boom, it's on sale. Who wants some more? Those kinds of, those kinds of tags really help you hit bonus and qualifications. And um, so anyways, I don't know if we have time to get into that tonight, but you guys see the possibilities for that. But right now, what I want you guys to really get into is just what it would be like to consistently reach out and start connecting and building these relationships. So we're gonna go down our customer list, connect with our customers. Again, you don't need, honestly, you don't need a complicated follow-up system for customers. If you use TMZ and you actually use it consistently, you'll be in contact with all your customers, okay? And it'll work great. So once we've done that, we've messaged our six customers, this little circle will turn pink and I'll be done with my customers for today. I'll go to my consultants and start messaging people on my team. Again, just to make their day, let them know I care, let them know I'm here. This is why, by the way, this is why my product's called TeamZ and not Leadsy or Cheesy or Salesy. It's TeamZ because it's about building a team 
right? Once you build the team, now you can have a business that gives you the life you want. So teams are based on relationships. Does Luminous have a great business plan? Sure. Good products? Yes. But it's about relationships, right? Do you guys agree? It's about the connectedness, the team. And so people need to hear from you. And as the team gets big, it gets harder, to, harder and harder to stay in contact with the team. That's why you need something like Teams to help you. But, you know, I always just say, think about somebody that you admire that's upline, you know, like really big upline person that you really admire. And think about how much it would mean to receive a text from them congratulating you on some small victory letting you know they're thinking about you or they're present to help you when you need it. Like that means the world. And so when you can build a team with that kind of culture, it's huge. So the third piece of our, of our power hour is actually connecting with team. Okay. So prospects, customers, consultants, my goal is four a day. So I'm going to go four. Now, if you've got two people on your team, you might need to make that a zero goal for now and focus more on prospecting. But I want you guys to know it's here for you as you grow your organization so that you can continue being the master of relationships. Make sense? Okay. So prospects, customers, consultants, that's the first half of my power hour. My goal is 150,000 a year, which is 19 people a day. Honestly, I could do that in 15 minutes with Teamsy. Now, let's say it takes you 30 minutes to send out those 19 messages. You're halfway done with your power hour. The second half is your follow-ups list, okay? The follow-ups list, you can see mine's empty because the follow-ups list isn't automatic in Teams. You have to put people on the follow-ups list. So, the, so I want you guys just to kind of understand. You can set a follow-up for any person at any time in the future if you want, for any reason. But the reason it's here is so that when you share your business or you share products with somebody, you can put them now on your follow-ups list and follow up like a professional. Now, you follow up after you've shared. Everything else is just connecting. Make sense? And I just want to clarify the words because people are like, the oh, follow-ups. No, it's connecting. You're building relationships. So the, the goal here, and let me kind of give you an example. The goal is you're going to start a conversation by making somebody's day. Now you're having, now they respond. Oh my gosh, they responded. This worked. Now what? Now try to have a conversation with them. Talk. Just pretend you're in person. Ask them how they're doing. You know, ask them some questions. Find out what they did for the holidays. How are your holidays? How are the kids? Just ask them questions and engage them in conversation. And what happens is you, when you get their update, I, I like to use this phrase, tell, send me an update. What have you been up to? Send me an update. And when they give you their update, here's what I'm doing. I'm married. Here's my kids. They're amazing. Oh my gosh. People love talking about their kids, right? How many of you guys like talking about your kids? They, you know, they're talking about their kids. Well, how's work? They're telling you about work. Now what's the totally natural thing to do? Imagine we're in the grocery store. What would I do now? I'd give, I'd give her my update, wouldn't I? Well, here's, oh my gosh, it's so great to hear. You know, um, my kids are into that too or whatever. Now we're going to start talking about a little bit update, which is just polite. And people always ask me, Eric, how do I take this conversation? I'm making people's day saying hi. How do I get it to talking about the business? It's totally normal. It's part of your update. Are you guys with me? Oh, um, you know, it's... Yeah, I still work over at that place. But you, I don't know if you know this, but I started a new business. I'm really excited about it. It's been great. And tell them about your business, what you're doing and why you're passionate about it. Share a story. Share a story of how you helped somebody or how it helped you. You know what I mean? Like this is the point is, is that as you're sharing what you do and why you're passionate about it, instead of I'm doing a business now, would you like to see my products? Would you like to, can I send you a sample and would you give me your honest opinion? That stuff makes me gag, doesn't it guys, when people do that to you? Kinda, really? I have a question. Yeah. So I met somebody in the grocery store say, and yeah. I haven't seen them in a long time. And then we just started casually, you know, catching up on the kids. My kids are older, so sometimes I run into people in the grocery store that are kids new from elementary school, but we've lost contact because they're, all out of college. So I might say to them like, Hey, are you on Facebook? Um, let's connect because then if I connect, I can come to team, team Z or I'm just kind of like yeah. playing the scenario out. So then you could show us the really good way to do this. So I would, and I say this normally anyway, I'm like, let's connect on Facebook. We'll keep in touch, you know? Right. Um, so then right then and there, I'm searching them on Facebook, sending them the friend request. I come home, put them in Teamsy, document that I ran into the group, them at the grocery store and caught up. And then in a couple of days or set them as a, you know, number, whatever, and then reach out and say, hey, it was great, you know, seeing you at the grocery store. 
would love to get together soon and just start some conversation. But then in my mind, that person's going to go stalk my Facebook page now that I'm friends with yeah, them. Yeah, totally. And then they're going to see I'm in business. Yep. And then eventually I'll get to that conversation or they might come to me first and say, oh, what's this luminous beauty business you're posting about? So if I become Facebook friends with somebody, I should be manually adding them into Teamsy? Yes, for sure. Okay. And the second part is, is... Taylor and I were chatting on Facebook two days ago. She's smiling. And we have a coaching call tomorrow at 4.30. So if I, I'm wondering if I should use this to schedule my re reminders or appointments as opposed to a calendar. Because with Teamsy, you can actually, instead of just doing like a five, a three, a two, a one, or five, four, three, two, one, you can actually pick the day you want to do the follow-up, right? Yes, you set the follow-up, but you... You'd still want to use a calendar for your appointments. Okay. Because it, okay. it tells you the day, but you, you're going to want to slot in the, the calendar for appointment. Yeah. So, but, but you guys, what Kathy's saying is a perfect use. You know, I run into you in the store. Let's reconnect on Facebook. Now I'm, now I'm going to make sure that you're in Teamsy so that I can keep in touch with you and not lose you. Right. And so um, just a little, just a little, um, little tip for that. Rather than just say, let's find each other on Facebook, sometimes you don't. What I would do is say, if they say, yeah, let's stay connected, great. I would, I would actually ask, and it depends on your level of comfort with somebody, but a lot of times I would say, like, my name's really common, Eric Johnson. So you may not find me right away when you search Eric Johnson. So what I would do is I would go, hey, just so you get the right Eric Johnson, why don't you open up your um, Facebook uh, app and I'll send, the I'll send me a friend request from your account. And so I've done that a million times with people. So they hand me their phone and I search myself and I send friend requests to me from their phone. And, and then I pick up my phone and accept it. Okay, great. We're connected. So just a little tip there, just something to do. Um, the other thing that I, I like to do is if you meet people in a networking environment for the first time, rather than giving them a business card or something, um, take a selfie with them. Okay. Take a selfie with the new person, then text it to them. What's the number? I'm going to text you the selfie so you remember who I am and you can put the face to the name. These are just little things that I've learned that really work great. So if you're doing an event or something, be like, oh yeah, let's stay in touch. Let me text you. Here, let's take a selfie. I'm going to text it to you so you remember when, when you hear from me, you'll remember who I am. Then it's kind of cool because then when you're messaging, there's this like really fun, friendly thing there. Okay, these are just little side notes to help you guys. But then whenever you meet somebody, whether it's online or in person, or you reconnect with somebody, yeah, you want to get them into Teamsy so you can start building that relationship. So in our example, I'm going to use Kathy as an example. I sent her a message saying hi. She responds hi, right? So now I'm trying to have a conversation with her. And, um, and through the course of this conversation, and you know what, it might not be the first conversation, you guys, it might take several conversations over several months to get to this point. And that's okay, because you're talking to enough people. But at some point we're talking and I'm telling her, oh my gosh, I started this new business and this is why I'm so passionate about it. And this is what it's done for me and I've helped other people, blah, 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 right? When you, when you are telling people what you do and why you're passionate about it, their response is almost always, wow, cool, good for you. It's not like, oh gosh, here it comes, right? Because you've invested, you had a real genuine conversation, you've shown you're caring for people, you found ways to help them through the process. And so at this point, when somebody shows some enthusiasm, when I'm sharing my story or sharing my products, you just ask them, would you like to learn more? Okay. Would you like to learn? And you can tell by the way they, they respond. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Oh, I need to take a look at your, some of your stuff. Well, would you like to learn more? You know, would you like to see some of the products? Would you like to learn more about the business opportunity? And if they say yes, now what we're going to do is we are going to set up a share. Okay. A share is where we're going to actually share them some products or recommend some products, or maybe we're going to sit down and talk to them about the business. Maybe we're going to invite them to a three-way call with our upline or, or an online event, something that will be, give us an opportunity to share the business once they've seen some interest. Are you guys with me? So let me show you how to do this in Teamsy. So Kathy and I have talked a little bit and now she's interested in learning more. Um, so I have asked her if she wouldn't mind jumping on a call with myself and my upline. She says, okay, yeah, let's do that. And I can learn about the program. Great. So here's how I'm going to log this in Teamsy. First off, she's not on my dashboard right now because I've already connected with her, right? So I'll use this little lookup bar to find her. Okay. And that brings me to her full contact record. There it is. This would have all of her information. 
this would have all of our conversations, right? The activity feed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that connect box, just like on the dashboard by clicking the button. And then what type of connect it was, I'm going to log that we had a three-way call. See this three-way call? And then right here, I'll put all of our notes from our call. And on the call, obviously, we shared the business opportunity with Kathy. So I'm going to click on share to log that this was a share. Okay. And so it was business business opportunity share. So now Teams is going, okay, he had a three-way call with Kathy and they shared the business. Great. Now that when I put it on share, it activated the follow-up. See that little yellow calendar? It turned it on. So now it knows since I've shared, I need to follow up. So I'm going to set a follow-up for any time in the future. It defaults to two days just in case you forget, but let's say I'm going to follow up tomorrow. So I'm talking to Kathy. She's like, oh my gosh, this sounds so great. I need to talk to my husband first. No problem. Let me follow up with you tomorrow, see if you have any questions. She says, great. Okay, so I set her for tomorrow. Now, when I log this, you guys, let me show you what happened. See, the follow-up is set on her contact record. If I go to the dashboard and I go to follow-ups, you'll see there she is on my follow-ups list due tomorrow. When I set the follow-up with her, it actually took her off my prospects list temporarily and put her just on my follow-ups list. Okay, are you guys with me? It also, see up here, it logged a share. One of my three is done for the day. So tomorrow when I do my power hour, I'm going to connect with prospects, customers, and consultants, just as I showed you. Then I'm going to go to my follow-ups list, see that Kathy's due for a follow-up, and I'm going to send her a follow-up message. This couldn't be any easier than this, you guys. Let me show you how easy this is. I'm going to go to scripts. I don't know if you know this, but all my follow-up messages are in scripts for you to use. I'm going to go to scripts, and I'm going to find one that says follow-up. Here it is, follow-up number one. Here's how it reads. Hi, Jane, just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Super simple, right? Every one of these follow-up scripts is refined through trial, error, and psychology. So here we go. And again, they're not manipulative. They're just friendly. So I'm going to use this one, change the name. What questions do you have for me? And again, the same way, I'm going to send her this message, okay? There she is. We'll send her this message. Super easy. Are you guys with me? So I'm sending her that message. It's sent. Now, when I log it in Teams, this is important. I want to set a new follow-up. So I want to keep her on my follow-ups list basically forever at this point until she closes. <laughs> so I'll follow up. Let's say I'll follow up again in two days. So I'll set a new follow-up for two days. I can actually leave myself a note so I can tell like what we talked about or what I want to talk about next time. I'm just going to say I'm going to do send follow-up number two. Now I log this. Okay, so now the follow-up's logged and now she's due again on Thursday. So the power hour, prospects, customers, consultants, then you go down your follow-ups list and you send follow-up messages to everyone who's due today. That's your power hour, five days a week, okay? In the meantime, you have conversations that you've created. Now, just real quick on the follow-ups. I just wanna to talk to you guys about this really quick. I know I'm kind of at the end, we should use Q&A, but I know Kathy would be happy for me talking about this. This is where people mess up the business. This is where people fall through the cracks. All this work to get someone interested, to take a look, and then we don't follow up. Here's, what, here's the, the, the statistic that breaks hearts all across this great land. It takes between eight and 10 follow-ups for 80% of people to make a purchase, okay? So 80% of purchases are made between the, actually between the seventh and 10th follow-up. How many of you guys follow up 10 times? Anybody worry that if you followed up 10 times, you would be the most hated and annoying person on the planet? Okay, good. So I'm talking to the right people. Most people will follow up three or four times and feel like they're doing pretty well. But have you guys, how, how many of you guys have come across somebody that was really interested and then they just ghosted you? you never, they never responded to anything. So here, there's, you're not doing anything wrong and there's nothing wrong with them. Here's what I'm going to tell you is that 80% of the people won't respond at all to six, seven, even eight follow-ups. Okay, so now that you know that, that's just the way it is, okay? I'm gonna teach you how to follow up without being annoying so people will be excited about it and they'll thank you. They'll say, thank you so much for following up. I'm just gonna teach it to you, okay? But I want you guys to just kind of think about this for a second. How many of you really believe that you can change people through this business opportunity? I mean, you can change people's lives and you're here because you're excited about that, okay? It doesn't matter how good your business opportunity is or how great your products are. If they don't have either one of those in their hands, it's not gonna help them, true? 
The only tool that you have available to help people at this point in the conversation is your ability to follow up with them. This is why I want you guys to understand, just understand this philosophy. Following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. It's not an annoying thing. It's an act of love. Write it down somewhere. Put it in, on your computer screen. Remind yourself following up is an act of love. Put it on the, on the mirror in the bathroom where you brush your teeth twice a day and do all your cool makeup so that you remember following up as an act of love. Now here's how to do it without being annoying. I've shown you how easy it is. Do you guys agree it looks pretty easy using Teamsy to stay, in, stay on top of these follow-ups? Yes. Here's how to do it without being annoying. By the way, just use my scripts because it already uses these two principles. But the two principles for following up without being annoying, number one, don't ask them to do anything. Okay, don't have to respond. You don't have to make a purchase. You don't have to come to my party. You don't have to do anything. So don't ask anything of them, okay? The second principle is when you send a follow-up, it always has to be messaged. They have to be able to read it. They have to be able to read it. It has to be, how do you say that? It, legible? That's not the word I want. They have to be able to read it, okay? It can't be a voice message, cannot be a video message, cannot be a voicemail. Oh my gosh, call somebody on the phone unexpected. Is that annoying when your phone rings unexpected with somebody? So annoying. Nobody does that anymore. Sorry, our society has changed. When I was a teenager, I was on the phone six hours a day to the point where my parents would be like, I'm gonna take away your phone if you're not, right? How many of you guys were like that as teenagers? My teenager, I don't think he's ever used the phone to talk to a friend other than text. Well, because we didn't have internet or phone, cell phones, so you just had like a phone on a wire. Yeah, phone on the wire. So, <laughs> but it's different. People don't want their phone to ring, so make sure they can read it. And it has to be short enough that they can read the whole thing without opening it. So you want to make it sure it fits in the, in the notification. Are you guys with me? Yes, so, I'm totally with you. Can you share why a short written out message is better than a short voice clip. Yes. Okay. Um, who's, let me see moms, moms with small kids. Anybody with small kids? This is an example. Okay. Here's an example. Um, you send me a message and my kids are running around like crazy lunatics right now. Does that ever happen? That happens to me all the time. I've got, I've got four, one who's grown, he's a college kid, and then three that are little. So they're running around like crazy right now. Oh my gosh, you're trying to put together dinner. Your hands are in the chicken, whatever. The phone beeps, there's a, there's a message. You guys with me? Now, if I, I look over at my phone, because I, I, I have a deep seated need to see what the message says, but it's a voice message, okay? I don't know when I'm gonna listen to that voice message. Certainly not now, right? So I, I've got the little bit of frustration of, now I got to put that off to later and hope I remember. And they might not get to it, right? But however, if it was written, I would have in less than a second, my, your brain can read two sentences and I would see the message and get it every time. Even if I'm driving, I would see the message and get it. Like they will see the message and get it. Now, the reason they don't respond is because they're in the middle of something almost always when your message comes through, because that's our lives are so frantic these days. They're in the middle of something. So they meet, they're well-meaning to, to respond but they're not going to respond right now, which is why you guys, they won't open the message. They will not even open it because they don't wanna look like a jerk for not responding right now. Do you guys do this sometimes? And then now, because we're in the business that we're in, we're probably better about going to messenger or text later in the day or whatever and going, okay, what messages did I not respond to? But, but people going about their day aren't necessarily doing that, so they, they miss it. Plus, they're like, well, I'm kind of interested in buying that, but it's not my top priority right now. So this is why you want to stay in touch and just send a little message every once in a while that they get. Now, what happens is, and again, the messages have to be short, sweet. We don't ask anything of them. They're just encouraging. And you guys will see my, my um, scripts or things like, hey, I, I know you were excited when we talked. I'm here when you're ready. You know, things like that. So you're staying top of mind gently, not being annoying, not nagging them. But what will typically happen is if you stay in touch with somebody over time, um, they will thank you about six or seven follow-ups in long after you would have given up. And you're thinking this Eric Johnson guy is 
crazy. Why am I listening to him? No one, this person's never going to respond. You'll get a message that says, oh my gosh, thank you so much for staying in touch. I really appreciate it. And I'm so sorry I haven't responded to your messages. I just want you guys to know 20% of the people you talk to, two or three messages, they're done. They make the purchase, they're in. The rest of people, crickets, 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 until suddenly they're like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry I haven't responded. So now that you know that, there's a system to work it, right? Don't get emotionally caught up in it. Don't create reasons why they're not responding. Just assume, well, she was preparing raw chicken with screaming kids yesterday, so she couldn't respond, right? Or whatever. The dog throwing up on the baby right now, I'm not going to respond to that message about Luminous right now. You stay in touch. And every time they get that little message, they, they get that just a little feeling of love from you, and it compounds over time. Does that make sense? You'll also find that people who, who are brought into your business this way are more likely to do it and be successful because they saw, oh, she just stayed in touch with me. And I know I was a pain in the butt, but she stayed in touch with me and aren't I a great customer? So I need to do that, right? Does this make sense? So the team team system, I just want you guys to know, we talked about 21 customers, nine recruits over 90 days. How is that possible? Because every day you're creating conversations with people you're having great conversations, you're finding interest, you're following up with them, and every single month, people that are on that follow-ups list are gonna be converting, right? Some people might take six months, some people might take three days, but as you just work this system, you don't really know who's gonna sift through this month, but as you're connecting with people, you'll have conversions every month, and it's a consistent climb in your business. Make sense? And it's also something you could teach a brand new person, right? Okay, so let's do, I know there's a lot of stuff I didn't show you guys, but um, I want you guys to have a chance to ask me questions. I know I'm kind of going over my time. So let me stop talking and just let you guys, if you have questions, just feel free to unmute your microphone. I left you permission to do that and ask away and I'll be happy to um, answer any questions you might have. As she hands the iPad. <laughs> you have to unmute, guys. Um, yeah, got it. Got it. Okay. Woo! Okay. Nope. Nope. Okay. All right. All right. We could probably hear you on Abby's um, device that you guys are watching. So just talk into that one. So my question is, what does it like reprimand you or like anything if you don't hit your things? Like what, what, like, you know, like how do you not <laughs> fall behind or just like be okay with that? Like, <laughs> I need a consequence. <laughs> I need a consequence of all errors. No, we build that into the system, please. <laughs> um, I think I he's still hear. muted. He's muted. It's going to make you bad and wrong for not doing it. It does not reprimand you. No, but what I recommend you do is simply get a success partner. This is yeah. the best thing to do. This is what I do in my boot camps. You get a success partner or, or partners, actually groups of people work great. You, it looks like you guys got that cornered down there in Orlando. But here's what you do with your success partner. Hey, let's do this teamsy thing together. Great. And let's say you're in a free trial together. Let's do the 30 day free trial together. Perfect. What I want you guys to do is when you've done your, whatever your goals are, you know, one of you might have blow up goals. One of you might have normal goals. That's fine. Whatever you, whenever you've done today's activities, you get this little, you crushed it message 100% on Teamsy. I want you to just take a screenshot of that and message it to the team or to your group of accountability partners. And so you guys reprimand each other and encourage each other. Now imagine what your month would be like if you actually did teams, you say four or five days a week for a month, imagine how much you would create. One of the things, one of the challenges I always give teams is a five day challenge. I say, tr just try to go to, go into teams and connect with a hundred people, just sending a message. That's what I mean by connect. They might not respond, but message a hundred people over five days, five days in a row, 20 people a day for five days. It will actually freak you guys out. You'll be like, I can't, I'm, I can't do this. I can't keep up. There's too many conversations happening. Oh my gosh. And the reason why I want you to do that isn't because I want you to feel overwhelmed, but I want you to understand that you have the ability to create momentum. 
big time. And, and so you can't ever believe the stories you've told yourself, like there's nothing going on. I've tapped my warm market. Or when your team says these things to you, like, no, nope, five days, 20 people a day, go into Teamsy, message people, see what happens. You know, and again, you'll lose your mind with conversations, but that's why I recommend having a couple set aside uh, half hours to just respond to messages. So you're not on it all day um, to kind of keep, if you've got no customers and no team and right now you just want to make it happen, then be on your phone all day. It'll make you feel like you're busy. But once you get going, <laughs> Once you get going, you need to be more organized than that, right? Um, so does that make sense? So get a success partner, hold each other accountable. Now, what, what Teamsy requires for you to be successful is that you log into it every day. It doesn't come after you. You have to go to it and go to work. Does it notify you if you haven't been on it? No. Oh, oh. okay. It's, it, here's, the, here's the deal, guys. So Eric suggested to me that one of his... Um, top leaders that's using this create a, a group for their team that is using Teamsy. So Carmen, you had asked the question on the team page and I said, stay tuned because Eric's going to be sharing. You said you were going to share a document with me on how he set up this group and some like group rules and whatever. So we'll do that. And then okay. we're going to have this video. So as new team members come in and they're looking for systems, we're going to share this on the entire team page and then invite people to that group. But no one is gonna be in that group unless they have done the 30 day trial and maybe have to send me a screenshot or something like that. And then within that group, we can all hold each other accountable or accountability partners. I, Abby, I don't know if you watched Coffee Chat last week, I like claimed you, <laughs> um, but we talked about that. Um, so we, I mean, we wanna cheer each other on, right? Because yeah. we're gonna see tremendous momentum and then what's going to happen is we're going to go to our teams and share like look at what's happened and celebrate one another within the team page and then they're going to be like take me to this magic you know and then we can share the video with them from tonight and then they can jump on board and we can help them because this is like one of those things when we find success then our job is to pay it forward because i am a systems person and not everybody's systems person. I'm a list person. I, I, I change up the way I do my list just for fun, you know? Um, but this is tried and true. I mean, you heard Eric in the beginning, over a hundred thousand direct sellers or multi-level marketers or whatever they want to call themselves have, look at my dog, <laughs> um, have, have, have taken advantage of this system and I am coming back to it because I knew it worked, you know? So we'll, we'll lock arms and do this together. I think it's really great. And, you know, of course, Taylor has to go up with the, you know, is it going to be like wah, wah, wah when you open your Teamsy that you didn't finish? No. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't do that. No penalties. That's terrible. That's shaming people into working. No, it should be fun. It, um, and you should actually look forward to opening your Teamsy every day and crushing it in the morning and then feeling really good about your business because when you do the activity and you see the results, that's when you're going to be like, I can't wait to open it tomorrow. You're yeah. Taylor, you're the type that's going to be like, can I get to tomorrow's activities? You know, like, honestly, that's, and it's so funny. She's the one who's asking this <laughs> because I know in the short amount of time I know her, I know she's like going to be like, okay, I want to do more. I crushed that day, you know, kind of thing. But um, we'll see results. We'll see results. Yeah. You'll definitely see results. I'll tell you what happened to me. Um, when I, when I was, so I was well, I was well networked. So I, some of you guys are, and that's the thing. It's like, I, I had a, I had a life where I had met a bunch of people and had a good network. So people knew me when I started my business, it was just more introducing to this new thing I'm doing. And I knew this was missing. And, and so I got the team together to build Teamsy. And when they had the first draft of it, I was the only one in the world who had it, you guys. And, um, I uploaded my Facebook friends into Teamsy. I was like, this is so great. And um, I reached out to 43 people. I sent that message, that first message that I showed you guys tonight, because there were no scripts, that was just my message. I copied and pasted that message 43 times and sent it to people. Um, and I was like, wow, that was so cool. And the response rate was like 90%. I was so busy having messages with, you know, having conversations with people. I didn't know what to do with myself. 
And I was like, okay, note to self, this is for you guys, note to self, I don't need to do them all in one day. The, the five or six or seven a day is fine, <laughs> right? I did them all in one day. So, but, but here's what I want you guys to know is that month, um, that I was an unknown in my network. I was, it was my first year in the business. Like I wasn't a known quantity, but I got a handwritten note from the, from the um, CEO of the company congratulating me on the 23 customers I signed that week. So I was like, okay, I think I got something here. I think people might want to use this system. I think it's going to work. Now, it may take you longer to build, just depending on where you are with your relationships. If you're building trust from scratch, it takes longer. But with the relationships that already trust you, reaching out and connecting, you'll be amazed the magic that happens quick. Now, just real quick, a couple things I want to say on this. Teams is free for 30 days. After that, it's $29.99 a month. So it's less than a dollar a day. If you make, you get one customer that pays for it, right? So we're going to, that's the goal is for you to get one customer a month from Teamsy that pays for your Teamsy. It's tax deductible. You don't have to worry about that. Um, the, the next piece that I want to mention, Kathy and I were talking about this. If you're nervous about getting it set up, we've got a great help center in Teamsy with videos and help tutorials and things. If you're one of those, if you're like me and you'd run, just want to go find the help center and get it done. But I also have a great team of customer service uh, professionals that you can message questions to. You can also sign up for a Zoom, one-on-one -on -one Zoom, um, where they can walk you through setting up. So here's what I want you guys to know. If you're going to opt in for the one-on-one -on -one Zoom, you need to make sure that you're in front of a computer, not on your phone, okay? Because you want to be on a computer so that you can be logged into your back office and be logged into your Facebook and your Instagram so that we can actually, because you can give them control. They can take over your computer and they can pull the files and clean them up for you and stuff. But if you're not on a computer, um, they won't be able to do any of that for you on the call. Does that make sense? So if you do the one-on-one, -on -one, make sure you're on a computer and you can get it all done. Um, most of you will be able to just do it through the, through the help center too, but I just wanted you to know that's there. So I want to help you remove that. Same thing for you leaders who are bringing people on. They're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with the files. Great. Well, they can walk you through it. Does that make sense? So, um, oh, one more thing I wanted to say. I need a, I need a Luminous volunteer to do one of these Zooms with my team so that we can document step-by-step step the steps in the back office to get the data. So if any of you wants to be that person, just throw your name in the chat and I will have them connect with you um, to set that up so that we can do that. And that way what we can do is in the FAQ on Teamsy, it would say Luminous Beauty, here are the steps. So your team could just go and get those, get those steps at every time and do it themselves. Make sense? Okay, so Nancy is the one saying she's game. Okay, great. Right down here. Who has who doesn't even have paper on their desk? Look at me. Oh my gosh, you don't want to see my desk. I do want to say I actually did a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with Ricardo on Saturday, and he was super helpful. So this is great, Nancy, especially that you're going to do this because he took some notes of how our back office exports our customer list and our um, consultant list. And so when you're importing into Teamsy, which is easier than you think, um, some of our columns didn't align. So that's why it'll be great for you, Nancy, to do a Zoom so that they can document to make everybody else's lives easier for any future Luminous Beauty too. Um, but I, I've done it and it was a little challenging at first, but it's something that they can totally customize for us, um, by us being like one of the first teams to ever really try to utilize it. They had, you know, consultants here and there, but since we're trying to do this and work together as a team, I think it'll be super beneficial to all of us. Yeah. Ricardo had a, had a couple hiccups with Kathy's, um, imports, but it was something I was able to fix in 10 minutes. So, so, so that's why it's so important for us to get, I, I may have, uh, may have more experience than him doing this stuff, right? I've been doing this four years <laughs> full time, but um, that's why we want to get like an SOP document. Here's step by step by step, how to do it for Luminous. And that way, everyone on my team is doing it right. And for those of you guys who are like, just give me the map. I don't need you to walk me there. You can go in and follow the instructions, get it done too. So. Um, that's really fun and exciting. And once we get that stuff in there, then you can grow and, and send people on your team with confidence knowing we've got everything nailed down. Um, any other questions before I bless you and send you guys off? Ask away. You have him.
I have one more yes. question. Okay. Um, if nobody else does. So if I have a new consultant join my team or a new customer place an order or a new Facebook friend, I don't have to upload the whole list again. I can individually add them to one of those groups, correct? Yes. So like what you do is just, hold on, let me just show you real quick. Um, on every page of Teamsy, you'll see this add contact button. On your phone, it's just a, it just says add because there's not as much room, but you guys can figure that out, right? So I would just put somebody in here. So like, for example, <laughs> hold on, I got a pen in the way here. Here we go. Did I spell it right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Close enough. Okay. So there's Nancy. Look, so if I had her email, I could put it in there. Now I could put in, was she a prospect, customer, consultant? Who am I adding? And then I can create that contact. And now, now it's created the contact and I can put any information I want in here, email, phone, address, right? The name of her dog, cat, whatever. I could put all that stuff in there so that it's on her record. Make sense? So what yeah. you do when you get a new friend on Facebook, you just add them in here real quick. Put them on there. You meet somebody at the store, you add them in there. I, I actually would meet people and say, I'm going to put you in my, um, my, my relationship manager right now. So like I remember one time I was, for those of you who don't know my background, I used to be a beach body coach when I started this. So I was doing, you, are you guys familiar with that company? And so one time I was in an, I was in Las Vegas in an Under Armour outlet store and some guy was talking to me and he was like, uh, once he found out what I did, he was like really interested in joining one of my fitness groups. So I was like, I pulled out my phone I, and I had Teensy and I was like, let me put you in right now. Great. Okay, great. I'll follow up with you Monday. Look, I'm setting the follow up right now. Follow up Monday there. Boom. Now I can't forget you. I'll connect with you Monday and we'll get, we'll get all the details set up. And he was like, cool. So again, don't be afraid to like showcase how, what a professional you are. Does that make sense? This is a tool that, this is a tool that sets you apart as a professional. People will, when you use Team Z consistently, what you will, what you will find is people are, are will compliment how consistent you are because it's, remember how I said it's attractive to people? You're like, wow, you're so consistent. You're so on top of it. It's amazing. It's like, if you just do what the system says, you'll come across that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, like, I put my mom in my team Z because I, I'm not good about calling her enough. So then it was like every month I'd get a reminder to call my mom. She was like, oh, that's so great. Why are you calling me? No reason. <laughs> Why do you call me on the third of every month? You know, because that's when teams, you, come, you know, you get the idea. So you can, <laughs> you can put friends and family in there that you just want to have a better relationship with. It's great. It's there to remind you, right? Just to connect with people. So hopefully that helped you guys. All right. I better go. I better go back to my family. But I want to say, um, Kathy, thanks for having me. Um, I hope, hopefully this was really helpful to you guys. Um, welcome to the Teamsy family. God bless you guys. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Eric. We look forward to the recording to share it with everyone. I'll send it to you uh, probably early in the morning. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks for Bye, joining everyone. in.